Hiya, I'm Hannah Sheree Smith uh, from the British Blacklist and today I'm with Kemp Powers, uh, who is the screenwriter and original playwright for One Night in Miami. So, I mean, like I said, your the film is based on your 90 minute one act play. Um, and I think you can really see that in the film because of the dialogue is so central to the plot and the character development. Sure. I wanted to ask, how did you go about imagining how these four icons would realistically speak to each other, especially when they're such revered figures? Honestly, I, I mean, lots and lots of research. Uh, I mean, I'm not I'm, I'm not, I'm in, I'm in the majority and there's lots of fans of all four of these men, particularly Malcolm X and Muhammad Ali, you know, are two of the most, you know, famous men in the, in, in the world. And, and thankfully there's, there's so much video you can see of interviews and stuff with them. But what I was going for in the film was different. I was, I just wanted to do what I consider a realistic characterization of them, which is not about how they speak. It's not about impersonations or imitations. Um, and just doing this research, finding out all the things that were really happening in their lives, the real things that were happening in their lives leading up to this night, I use that as basically the fuel for the characterization of each man. Like I tell people, while this conversation is fictionalized, and this is a fictionalized debate, it's fiction that's 100% powered by fact. You know, each of these men was going through um, a, 1964 was a crucible year in the lives of each of these four men. And, you know, knowing everything that I know about them, you know, I wanted to, you know, to create a characterization of each man that would feel believable, believable, maybe even to someone who knew them. It wasn't just, it wasn't meant to be fan fiction, where it's like, okay, if you could put <laughs> these four guys in a room, what would you have them do? Oh, sure, I have Malcolm X pull out a machine gun. It's like, he would know, you know, like, you want to make sure that you have them behave in a way that is within their actual character. And that mm -hmm. was for the focus and letting go of the impersonations and the hand gestures and, and all of the things that we, we know them in for. And I think getting to the truth of their humanity makes them feel more authentic than any impersonation would ever accomplish. And that's why I'm so happy with what the actors were able to do in this film. Yeah, and I think that really comes across that balance between them as people, but also you put a lot of time into making them discuss really important issues uh, to the black community then, but also now. Yeah. And I wonder, do you have any particular affinity to the politics of any of the men? Like, did you grow up particularly idolizing one of them? Yeah, I mean, growing up in my 20s, I mean, I'm Generation X, so Malcolm X is like our, our patron saint, you know what I mean, mm -hmm. of my generation. Um, but the older I got, the more the nuance and shrewdness of Sam Cooke really impressed on me, especially when you have to go out in the world, start raising a family, get a job, things like that. Um, so I always tell people that the central conflict between Malcolm X and Sam Cooke is actually the internal monologue that goes on all the time for me in my life every day. I feel mm -hmm. like in terms of which one is right, it, the answer is it's situational. They, they're both right. There are some days when it's better to try to create change working within the system, which is what Sam Cooke espouses. But then there's other days where it's best to burn it all down and start over, which is what Malcolm X espouses. Um, I think both of them are correct. And the reality is for any real, I feel that for any real progress for the black community, you need people who have both methods of thinking. You need some Malcolm X's, you also need some Sam Cooks in order for us to all move forward. Because at the end of the day, both men want the same thing. Yeah, I completely agree. And can I just ask to finish with, if you could have the opportunity to talk to any of the four men today, who would you want to talk to? Oh man, that's a tough one. Um, it, I mean, Jim Brown's still alive, obviously, but of the other three, um, I have to say it would probably be Sam Cooke. <laughs> I ask why? Um, because Sam Cooke's personal beliefs in politics were not as much on public display as Malcolm and Muhammad Ali's. So mm -hmm. I feel like I would come away from that conversation learning more that I didn't know about him than I would coming away from a conversation with the other two. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. And thank you for the film. Thank you. Oh, oh my pleasure.